Hello friends, welcome to the Biological Life Sciences channel. Myself, Ashutosh Shopade. Today we are going to see recombinant DNA technology and restriction enzymes. The technology used for producing artificial DNA through the combination of different genetic material from different sources is referred to as recombinant DNA technology. Since here we are going to add different genes from different species into a particular organism in which we require a desired trait, therefore this is called also genetic engineering. The recombinant DNA technology emerged from the discovery of restriction enzymes in the year 1968 by Werner Erber, which, which is a Swiss microbiologist. So today let's see the steps of recombinant DNA technology. First of all, we have to isolate the genetic material from the desired organism and then its restriction digestion is done and the gn of interest in which the fragment is present is then taken it is isolated using pcr it is introduced into a vector and ligated and introduced into a host cell after expression the isolation of recombinant cell is done as shown in the figure the bacterial recombination is done here bacterial cloning is done different gene is introduced in the bacteria and then it is allowed to produce expression and the recombinant cells are isolated from that. So let's see what are tools that are required in recombinant DNA technology. First and foremost is the restriction enzymes. The next is cloning vectors, competent host cell. In case of bacteria, it is called competent cells. In case of plant, there will be plant cell. In case of animals, there will be animal cells. Then DNA ligase, alkaline phosphatase, DNA polymerase, polynucleotide kinase, tag DNA polymerase and so on. Today in this video, we are going to concentrate on restriction enzymes. So let's see what are the types of nucleases. Nucleases are nucleic acid degrading enzymes. So there are two types. First is exonuclease. They remove the nucleotides from the ends of DNA. That is 5' prime end and 3' prime end. Endonucleases, they cut at a very specific position within the DNA. Therefore, endonucleases are also called as restriction enzymes and they are very important. It has a specific site in which it, in which it cleaves, it is called restriction site and it cleaves by breaking the phosphodiester bond present within the sequence. Let's see what is restriction enzymes in details. Restriction enzymes, these are the class of enzymes which belongs to nucleases categories. It cuts at a very specific sites which is called restriction sites. These are found in bacteria as a part of their defense mechanism against invaded viruses. For example, the bacteria will produce this enzyme to protect itself from the virus. It will degrade the DNA or RNA of that virus and not hamper anything to the bacterial DNA by its methylation pattern that is recognized by the restriction enzymes. So in bacteria, it will selectively cut up the foreign DNA and this process is called restriction. H. O. Smith, K. W. Wilcox and T. J. Kelly in 1968 isolated the restriction endonucleases. This enzyme that they isolated was from Haemophilus influenzae and was called as HIND second. Let's see the properties of restriction enzyme. Restriction enzyme first of all will scan the DNA molecule and find a very specific set of nucleotide that will be its restriction site and it will make a very specific cut at a very specific site which they can recognize. This is called restriction site. They are present in bacteria. They can be single functional subunit or a multifunctional subunit having different properties such as restrictive site, recognizing site, modifying site, etc. There are different uh, types of restriction enzymes that is restriction endonucleases based on its action. First of all, type 1. It cleaves at a site remote from the recognition site. For example, if the recognition site is present between 1 to 10 in the nucleotide, nucleotides, it will make a cut from either 100 base pairs to 1000 base pairs. It requires both ATP and S adenosyl methionine as a cofactor to function. It's a multifunctional protein with both restriction digestion and methylase activity. The type 2 restriction enzyme it cuts either within the sequence or a short specific distance, for example, either 10 base pairs or 20 base pairs sequence from the restriction site or recognition site. It requires Mg2 po uh, positive divalent cations as a cofactor. It's a single functional restrictive uh, enzyme and it is, it is independent of methylases. Type 3 restriction enzyme, it cleaves as a, at a shorter distance from the restriction sites. It requires ATP 
but do not hydrolyze it. It also requires S adenosyl L methionine, which stimulates the reaction but do not take part in it. Let's see what is the nomenclature of restriction enzyme. There are few rules by which we write the names of the restriction enzyme. The first letter of the genus is taken in which the said enzyme was discovered. This letter is taken in capital. Then the first letter of first two letters of the species are taken and all the three letters is written in italics. For example, eco, E capital, CO small from Escherichia coli, HIN, H capital, IN small from Haemophilus influenzae and if the organism is Haemophilus para influenzae, it will be capital H small PA and this has to be written in italics. The next is followed by strain and type of identification. For example, if Escherichia coli K strain is there, then it will be written as eco K. And if the enzyme is encoded by plasmid, then the name of the plasmid is written. Example, eco RI comes from Escherichia coli RY13. Here R is derived from the name of the strain. Roman numerals following the name indicates the order of the enzyme in which they were isolated from the strain of the bacteria. So if an organism forms many uh, uh, enzymes, they are identified by the sequential Roman numeral. For example, HINT3, HINT2, HINT1 like that. Discovery of enzymes ECO R1 first time led to the award of Nobel Prize to W. Arbor, H. Smith and D. Nathans in 1978. Let's see what type of cut this restriction enzyme makes. There are two types of cut that this restriction enzyme makes. The first cut is blunt end, second cut is sticky end. Let's see with an example. First, let's take an example of an enzyme HAE3. It's a restriction enzyme. First of all, it will scan the DNA to find its restriction site, which is a four nitrogenous bases site. This is the site for it, the site marked in red color. This enzyme will produce a bl blunt end. It will cut right at the center. So this produces a blunt end. So blunt ends are difficult to be ligated since they are plain ends made by restriction enzymes. The other ends is called sticky ends which is produced by eco R1 enzyme. For instance, you can see here the restriction site of eco R1 in the center. It is GAATTC, it, uh, second strand CTTAAG. So it will cut in a zigzag manner and will produce a sticky end. Sticky ends are easy to be ligated. These are also called as staggered end. Some more examples of restriction enzymes are here. Hint 3. You can see the restriction site of that. It will produce a staggered end. BAM H1. This will also produce a staggered end. And ALU1. This is going to produce a blunt end. So these were the informations required for RDNA technology and restriction enzymes. I hope you liked it. Thank you. If you like the video, press the like button, please share, comment and subscribe and press the bell icon for further videos.